Continuing our coverage here at the 2024 NFL Scouting Combine, a gentleman who is now entering year number the G three man. <laughs> as the GM of the New York Giants, Joe Shane. Joe, welcome back. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Always, man, always. I mean, you're kind of the hot button topic of the Combine, you know that? I mean, you're kind of like, you are. <laughs> the Giants, the six pick, the Daniel Jones conversation, the Saquon Barkley conversation, right? Yeah, a lot going on. I mean, a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, like where are you guys at right now in the whole process of things as an organization? Yeah, well, we got a little curveball on Friday afternoon. I was I was sitting in my office and I was actually watching free agents, and we got the email from the league on the salary cap, and we we were operating off some pretty conservative estimates, I right. would say, in terms of mapping out our offseason. What do you think so it was going to be? Uh, we were at we were around the 243 range is kind of yeah. where we were estimating. So when I opened the email, I was like, oh my gosh! And you know, we gave the staff a couple of days off and the weekend off, and we're going to reconvene here. So. Now that the new numbers, again, we're going to recalibrate uh, later today and kind of look at, okay, now we have a little bit more flexibility. You know, we, we were in good shape as it was, but um, now maybe we have a couple more options on the table for not only our players, but players outside the organization that may, may come into the mix now. When you find that out, is yeah, part yeah, of your ahead, reaction Mike. like, what the guys, hell? Like, <laughs> why didn't, tell us? Why didn't somebody us tell us a little sooner right. than right now? Well, if you remember, we used to get it like at the labor meetings right. in December. So, again, with COVID and paying back the benefits, and it's way over my head, all the things that, that go into this this calculation. But, yeah, it would have been nice to know, but at least it was on that end. Like, yep. I'll, I'll gladly wait and have some uncertainty if it's going to come in, um, you know, where it did and come in more versus less. It's a game changer. I don't think the, the public realizes, you know, yeah, I know it's only $15 million or so or whatever, but yeah. there's a lot of finagling and wiggling you can do with the roster with that 15 million. Yeah, and I think it'll benefit every team differently. As in, you know, some teams that were maybe had different salary cap practices, or they were in the window yeah. and needed to get out of some cap issues, or some teams that were in good financial health. It's just gonna it's gonna help them with with more money to spend. So I think all 32 teams are obviously happy about where it is, and um, you know, it's gonna benefit teams in different ways. How how do you approach? The quarterback conversation, right? I'm a supporter of Daniel Jones. I yeah. believe you are too. But, yeah. like, you know, the injury, you know, people in our area, right, the Northeast, I don't know if Daniel Jones is the franchise guy. Right. You are the number six pick. Yeah. You know, kind of how are you guys kind of flushing that out right now? Yeah, again, we're in year three of the build. Right. So we have needs. There's multiple needs. Yeah. And I right. know the hot topic is quarterback, quarterback and right. Saquon and Xavier McKinney and some of those guys. Yeah. But again, he's the reality is he's coming off, um, you know, three injuries in, in two years. And right. everybody, that's facts. So it, it's something we got to consider. And, you know, we're going to address it through free agency. And if, if there's an opportunity in the draft, we're going to look at every position, not only quarterback. We're going to look across the board because we do have needs across the roster. So uh, Daniel's trending in the right direction right now. He started throwing uh, two weeks ago. So He's doing it stationary. He's yeah. not moving yet. There's right. some hope that he may be able to do something in the spring, seven on seven. And then, you know, the hope is that he'll be ready for camp. Yeah, so, sure. again, every patient is different in terms of how they recover from ACLs or injuries in general. So, knock on wood, we haven't had any setbacks, and he's, he's trending in the right direction. Right. So. Did my countryman, dare I say Paisano, Tommy DeVito, did he show enough <laughs> last year to be the number two? Yeah, he's going to compete for it, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, he came in, he won, he won three straight games for us, did a good job, and again, as a rookie, undrafted free agent to win win three games in the league, I mean, that's that's impressive. And he's wired the right way. He he learned a lot, and he learned what New York can mean when yeah. you have a little success there. And right. I think he was he was thrown into the limelight, and he, he, he handled he's it well. He's embracing it, right? He's embracing yeah. it, and, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a big offseason, and again, some Sometimes these guys, they don't know what they don't know when they come in as a rookie. And now that he's been through the process, he understands how to be a professional. Tyrod Taylor was a, was a really good resource for him, as well as Daniel, in terms of how to be a pro. So I'm excited, excited to see how he looks year two, um, you know, coming back. Is there a line where you don't want a guy to embrace it too much? I mean, you can get sucked into a vortex yeah. in yeah, New York. Absolutely. absolutely. You want to keep the main thing the main thing. Right. And as long as it's not taking away from your job and your ability to perform on the, the field or prepare for the upcoming week, um, yeah, I think it can take away. So Dave's did a good job and his staff of, again, keeping the main thing the main thing with Tommy and not letting it get, get out of hand. Right. Now, I mean, I got to just ask you, right, just the Saquon part of this, this discussion, right, where we're at there. I mean, the running back general and market in general, I would think the 255 number – is helpful in the Saquon conversation, right? Yeah, absolutely. Across the board of our free agents, it's, it's helpful. And, you know, the second franchise tag is just over 12. The new franchise tag for running backs is 11-9-ish. Yeah, right. 
So, right. you know, technically you could franchise them again. It's only 155 or 200,000 more than what the franchise tag is. So uh, the new numbers that came out, it opens up. All options are on the table. I'm not saying we're going to franchise him or not franchise yeah. him, but everything's on the table. And we'll have conversations with his um, representatives this week and see if we can get something done. We've been working on this since oh. November of 22. Yeah, sure. So, right. you know, again, ho hopefully we can come to a landing spot. I think the world of Saquon, he's a really good player. Uh, he's meant a lot to the organization, and, and, you know, we'll see if we can get something done. Do you, you think the receiver position could end up becoming sort of like the running back position where there's just so many that are coming out every year that are good? Maybe a couple get a jackpot and the rest become – Devalue guys that just yeah, yeah. They, they can never get that long-term deal because before we commit big dollars we'll just go get somebody else in round three yeah i think it'll help the middle class if that makes sense because i do i do think there's there's if we do this with our pro staff okay how many number one receivers are there in the league because everybody throws out number one receiver like there's a bunch of them and it's a fun debate when you start going through it with, it with the pro fun. scouting staff because right. you'll argue that guy's not a one he is a one yeah but i think it's the middle class um you know that, that's really benefiting this from this you know the guys that are in the 50 to 70 catch range that maybe aren't number one receivers. They're good number twos. I think those guys are going to benefit, and that market's going to continue to, to, to rise a little bit. There's always going to be those top, top guys. Then you got the secondary market. And got, there's 24, 25 receivers drafted every year. Right. Of those, how many actually make it? You know, it's, it's, it's a small number. Well, what separates those guys from the rest of the group? Because there's 100, 6'1", 200-pound guys that run 4'4". Four, four yeah. What is it What is it that you think makes a guy, when he gets to the NFL level, separate from the rest? To me, I go back to some of the greats that I've been around. You know, Steve Smith. It's that competitiveness, yeah. the toughness, right. the, it's the heart. The fearlessness. The yeah. fearlessness. Yeah. And I'm going to rip out your soul right. every day in one-on-ones. Right. -on I'm going to call you out. He showed up every day. Jarvis Landry was the same way. Mm -hmm. Steph Diggs is the same way. And, and so I think it's it's your makeup and what drives you to do more than everybody else and the work ethic and the competes. And a lot of that stuff, you got to be around the kids to measure that. And is it – and that's my next question. Like, how much of that can you glean from college and how much of it is you really don't know what they're going to be like until they get to the highest level? Yeah, th there's little things, you know. Something as little as blocking. Like, do you have it in you? Now it's simple, but but that that comes from in here. Like, yeah, you right. want to give the effort right. to help your running back out when your palms up when you don't get the ball to the quarterback. Yeah. But then you're not blocking for your running back. <laughs> right. You know, that would be selfish if I'm watching the film. That's but a sign. If, if a guy's yeah. out there blocking his butt off and he's driving a guy into the first row and he's also a good receiver that runs good routes and is you know, after the catch he's running guys over, he's not running out. So there's some things that you can look at that <laughs> can tell you the makeup of that type of player. Yeah. And again, there's a large margin for error at that position at the receiver when you're drafting him and. Your question is, was really good, Mike. What separates them? I and we're always trying to figure that out. And what I've found, some of the best ones that I've been around, it's just the heart, the competes, doing the little things, the toughness of that position. Because, you know, there are some divas at the position. And yeah, they're, they're, selfish they're different and, guys. You know, I think the makeup of the player is what is going to allow those guys to, you know, to separate themselves. Well, you did a good job with Jalen Hyatt last year. That was one where it's just, he's really fast. Let's yeah. let him go. We'll take him. Right. All right. Here's one I'm interested in always. We talk about it a lot. <clears throat> You guys, offensive linemen, I know there's a lot of talk about Evan Neal maybe being a guard. We're not sure what to do there, right? But evaluating offensive linemen right now, I mean, I've been around football my whole <laughs> life. It's not very easy, and especially with the way college football yep, is right now, absolutely. where it's one run play and one pass protection the whole game. Right. Tell, tell kind of like the receiver question, kind of like elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, and they're getting the ball out quick in college football. Exactly. You know, so you don't see them. Their tempo, the right. you know, they're not seeing a lot of complicated defenses. Right. You know, Twists, when, we, when we talk to some of these yep. prospects in our meetings, it's what's, what's, what gives you difficulty as a defense? Is it motions and shifts? Or is it the tempo? And, I mean, it, the amount of kids that have told us, like, sometimes we we just got to make the call because the offense is at the line of scrimmage and we can't make the call. Yeah, right. So, again, they're getting the ball out quick. So you really got to evaluate, you know, what these guys are seeing in terms of, you know, stunts, games, the complexity of the defenses, how long are they actually having to pass protect. Rarely do they run block. I mean, you know, there's, there's not like a lot of it. Zone run. That's yeah. all there is in yeah. college football right exactly. now. Exactly. So right? really what you're, you know, right. if you have a good coaching staff that can develop talent, you look yeah. at the physical traits, you know, the bend, the length, the size, the athleticism, the toughness, the competes, and then, you know, you hope you have a good coaching staff that can bring those guys in and, and develop them. But there is an adjustment period when, when they get to our level uh, from a technique standpoint that, you know, I think it's important to have a really good O-line coach to, you know, to teach that. Do you favor the schools that are a little bit more – 
you know, advanced with O-line stuff, like a, uh, maybe a Michigan or a Notre Dame or something, you know, like that. I think, yeah, some of the culture they come right, from, because right. I think the culture of that room and the makeup of the room That's is important, very important. Right? Yeah, I don't right. think you can underestimate the, the way those guys are wired and the continuity, because yeah. it's almost half your offense. It's five guys that got to be in unison right. on that, you know, picking up stunts, games, talking, the communication, trusting each other. So it doesn't matter, to, to me, the O-line doesn't matter really where they come from, but more the makeup of the kids, the toughness, the grit, the ability to communicate. Because, uh, again, every team, you got five stars, 32 teams, not everybody's going to be a first-round pick right. or a talented kid. Right. It's those meat and potato guys that can get every ounce of talent out of themselves to, to, to play at the next level that you're looking for. Yeah. Hot yeah. topic this year, the kickoff. NFL is going to do something. It's currently a dead play. It's yeah. pointless. Just put it to 25 yeah. the way it's gone. What would you do? Yeah, I, I think they're looking at the XFL um, rule, which, again, yeah. I, is that what you would do? Is, is interesting. Is that what you would do? Yeah, I don't want it to completely leave the game. Like, no. I still – it was an important part of the it's a it's a part of the game that I enjoyed and it's exciting. So we just put Devin Hester in the Hall of Fame. We're yeah, taking exactly. It away. I yeah. don't want it to leave the right. game. I don't want because now when we're looking at special teams guys, you're keeping guys for punt and punt and return. Yeah. You know, so on your 53 man roster, you guys have a guy that plays 10 snaps a game. Right. Where you know if the kickoff return is you know comes back into play and it's an important part of the game or at least a meaningful part of the game. You know, I think it would help, and I think it's exciting for the fans. Yeah, it is. We're, we're fans of the XFL rule. I mean, we would rather have that, right, than anything else. A lot of people in the NFL don't want it. A lot of the football people don't want it. I feel like the league office does want it. But anything that actually causes it to be a play to again be a return. is yeah. fine with me. Yeah, it's, I'm with you. I'm with you. I support that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Joe? You, Joe's got to go to the podium. Joe's got to go to the podium. He's got other people to talk I to was here. Tempted, I was tempted to, like, see if we could push it, like, how far. <laughs> no, like, if yeah, the gas no, tank's getting do down that. on E, like, how people, far okay? you can do it. You're yeah, down but in I West bet, Virginia But by you don't yourself. have a jacket like okay. that. No, I don't, but... You know, I know yeah. Joe, and yeah, he lives you know, close I got a guy jacket. that I know that used to play quarterback yeah. for the Giants. Yeah, he might be able to get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff Hostetler? <laughs> exactly. Jeff Hostetler? Yeah, 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 Joe, exactly. thank you. Yeah, thanks we'll for having me. We'll be back with more like from Joe. the Combine right it, after man. this. All right, guys. <laughs> Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.